Effective lengths is, of columns is something relatively simple to deal with and account for, but has it a huge influence on the capacity you calculate. And so we're going to be looking at effective length of columns as part of our steel design course at Stellenbosch University. So here I've drawn a view through a column with load placed on top, some compressive load CU, and then we've got our strong axis XX and our weak axis YY. We load this thing up until the point it becomes unstable and buckles, and then going to go through the first part relatively quickly, because this is the easier bit. When it comes to effective length, as you've uh, studied previously with uh, Euler or Euler buckling, if it's fixed, fixed, it cannot rotate at the top, cannot rotate at the bottom, so you'd have a buckled shape like that. If it is pinned at the bottom, pinned at the top, when it buckles, it has a shape like that. And then lastly, if it's fixed at the bottom and free at the top, you've got a cantilever, and it kind of buckles like that with going vertically at the support. And when it comes to steel design, then we use the recommended design values. Now the theoretical effective length K for this would be about 0.5, but we'll use the 0.65 value for a, uh, to account for the fact that nothing is perfectly fixed in real life with bolt tolerances and all the rest of it. So we've got 0.65, then we've got our one factor, so that's a simply supported um, section effectively, and then a factor of two, for our column, because if we just drew this all the way down, it would be the same thing as a column that would look exactly like this, but over twice the length, so effective length of two. So that's all, all fine. Most people can pick those sorts of things up fairly quickly. But just remember when it comes to buckling, there are different types of buckling we have to account for. So if this is my beam length here now, for a general section, you can often have three effective lengths because we've got our LX, so buckling about the strong axis, so where it buckles like this. Then we can have our LY, buckling about the weak axis, and weak axis buckling typically governs. Normally it will fail in the weakest direction. Where you find it won't is, for instance, where the short axis, or the shortest length is the weak axis. So if the weak axis effective length is two meters and the strong axis length is six meters, then maybe the strong axis will actually buckle. But that's all related to your KL over R, your slenderness of the whole section. So LX buckling about X, LY buckling about Y, and then also LZ, our torsional length, about where, um, about what distance can the section twist. And this is also harder to define. In a typical doubly symmetric section, we don't normally account for torsion, but it is important to understand how it behaves and uh, how to design for it. So what I've drawn here is just a sort of typical cross section through, let's say, an industrial building. We've got girts all the way up the sides. We've got cold formed C's, um, cold formed up channels, and these are now providing lateral restraint at the position there, there, and there. So we've got a column here. These girts will be screwed to sheeting, so you end up with a very stiff face. So for this to move in and out of the page is very difficult because it basically have to tear a line all the way through your steel sheeting. So it's preventing lateral movement all the way down. Then we've also got a beam coming into the side of the building, some inside of our column. And then we probably have another beam there. Maybe, maybe not. We've got a beam. So we've got lateral supports at all those positions. So now when it comes to buckling, we have to be quite careful when we look at our effective lengths. Because if we ask ourselves the question, now here's our cross section, and then we've got our y-axis there, and our x-axis there. Can it buckle about those axes? So for the y-axis, that would mean moving in and out of the page, and these lateral supports are preventing that. So we end up with a ly like that, but then about LX, there's nothing preventing buckling between there and there, because if the section tries to buckle, the girts will just move with it. They are just, they are fixed to the column, and so they just move with it. And so we end up with an LX like this. Now we also have to ask ourselves, what is the torsional length? about between where and where can it twist. Now it's definitely prevented from twisting there, and it's definitely prevented from twisting there. But here we don't know, because I'm gonna draw this again. 
we have now some sort of support there. It's preventing this flange from moving. So the entire section about y-axis is being prevented from moving. But there's nothing preventing it from twisting. Because we've got something like that. It can actually twist against that, that support. It will depend on the nature of this connection. If this is a heavier connection and a heavier section, the whole section will be prevented from twisting. But for a conservative um, approach, we can assume that it can twist about that position. So what we end up with is we actually end up with a longer torsional length, an LZ, over multiple lengths. And so we could have a torsion failure. It's not going to be perfect. Once again, codes are approximation, so this isn't exactly right, and you may need to do more advanced analyses and get different codes. But for what we've got, we can see that LY, it'll buckle between here and here. That's preventing lateral movement of the whole cross section. LX, it'll buckle sideways between those positions. Torsion, LZ, so then axis right down the page, in and out of the page there, Z, more or less between there and there it can twist. That this will just twist with it. And once again, it'll depend on the connection and various other details, but conservatively, we're taking the full height of the section. So that gives an overview of effective lengths of columns. And just remember, you can have multiple effective lengths, and it does make your design a lot more complicated. And you can have then different modes governing. Normally, we go straight to um, our weak axis, but the others could govern depending on the effective lengths. Thank you.